Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Leah Matthews. How you doing, Leah? Hi, Chief. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing good. It's like we're, looks like we're uh, doing it from all different locations, man. I'm not used to that background, and and I'm reporting live from Utah uh, in Hill Air Force Base. Good, good. Yep, this could be a new background. Okay, awesome, awesome. So we got an awesome guest today that's going to uh, teach us something that we're all familiar with that we probably all need some lessons in, and that's money. So uh, without further ado, Leah, please introduce today's guest. Chief, yes, sir. Today's guest is right on the money, and he's with us today to discuss financial readiness and why being savvy with savings matters to the military community. Please give a warm Chief Chat welcome to Andy Cohen, Director, Office of Financial Readiness, Office of the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Force, Education, and Training. That's quite the title, Andy. Yeah. Well, thank you. The longer the title you have in the Pentagon, the, the lower you are in the pecking order. I just need to let you know. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So Andy, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. It's a pleasure to meet you. And uh, and uh, can you let us know where you're joining us from? I think you just kind of gave it away. Yeah, so uh, I, I am in Northern Virginia. I'm teleworking from home today. Um, my office looks nothing like the, the background of, of my uh, my little den, my study here at, at home, but I teleworking today to make sure that I uh, have a good uh, video connection and all, because uh, sometimes the firewalls at the Pentagon, you just never know what system you're gonna be working whether or not you can get in. And this is an important event. So we wanted to make sure that uh, we had full comms with you today. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's a pleasure Andy, to be here. Uh, Andy, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? So you served in the Army for 27 years. Um, share with us, why did you choose a life of service? Um, thank you, uh, Leah. and. Uh, to tell you a little bit about myself and the great job I have, even though I'm not sure at times how I got here, um, I've always had it in mind based on the values of, of my parents and grandparents of some type of career service, but never intended to serve in the Army for 27 years. And when I graduated from college with a degree in criminal justice and was commissioned in the Army, only expected to serve about four years and go into law enforcement. But it was the great people that I served with in assignments after assignments um, and uh, the lessons of, uh, especially my first ROTC instructor, a uh, Master Sergeant Logan, who uh, told us as cadets, you know, we had two missions in life if we got commissioned. One was to accomplish your mission. The second was to take care of your folks. And you weren't going to accomplish one unless you did two. And so that kind of always stuck with me and uh, was kind of guided, you know, my leadership philosophy through the service. And then I retired. I, I stayed in a, a in terms of serving others by spending about nine years working as a deputy director and chief financial officer of a large military charity, military aid society called Army Emergency Relief, um, which is similar to chief to Air Force Aid Society, uh, Navy Marine Corps have uh, Navy Marine Corps Relief Society and the Coast Guard have Coast Guard Mutual Aid. Uh, did about nine years there, um, private charity. And then as the department uh, started to put more attention into financial readiness as part of blended retirement, implementation and all, um, I decided to come back and join the civil service and enter the Pentagon and the Office of Financial Readiness and really work on getting to, to the left of, uh, oh my God, something bad happened and I need financial assistance. And how could I now start to make a difference uh, left, uh, left of what people would say, oh darn or oh snap or something or so, some other word that I probably can't say on chief chat here. Um, <laughs> and just work to kind of get people in a better spot. Um, so to me, it's really a, a great job. I, I mean, I'm really fortunate to, to have a job that I can be so passionate about, about instead of one of the many jobs where you just trudge into the Pentagon every, every morning before the sun comes up and trudge home after the sun has gone gone down. It's really a great job for me. And, and the, the folks I have working for me are really great folks. 
Yeah, and uh, you you said some things that kind of harp that uh kind of struck me. Uh, I think a lot of people uh, we go in with the intent of doing four years and then separating, and then also there seems to always be an old crusty math sergeant in the story that redirects us in the right direction uh, through our career. So um, even on the Air Force side, you'll go you'll go to retirement ceremonies and they'll talk about an old crusty math sergeant that that said something or, or did something to kind of change the trajectory of your whole entire life. So uh, thanks for thanks for uh, sharing that story. Uh, no, we, thank we you. Want... No, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I just say de definitely. You're absolutely right. And you know, you develop, and someday you know you will feel this, but uh, you develop uh, you know an identity, a bonding with with your fellow service members and everything else. And I really remember the day of my retirement ceremony, um, and when they they read the orders and they said, you know. Uh, Colonel Andrew Cohen is now retired. I mean, it, when I've actually heard those words, somebody read it from the orders, th there was a sense of, you know, oh my God, am I now detached from, from this great organization and these great people um, just by, by hearing those words and somebody, you know, almost like I was, uh, you know, detached from everything else. It was just, a, 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 oh my God, I'm, I'm not a part of it anymore, but, but you really are, you stay a part of it, whether or not you, you're still wearing the uniform on a daily basis. Absolutely. And I tell I told folks, um, I told some airmen this the other day, um, you know, when you're at your retirement ceremony, uh, you know, you read all these accomplishments, but you, you spend more time talking about the people that you uh, you you kind of <laughs> gathered along the way and that you influence or, or influence you along the way. So uh, it, it, it's all about, you know, the impact you have on people at the end of the day. So uh, we appreciate you for sharing that. Uh, but we, we'd like to learn more about your, your role in the Office of Financial Readiness. Uh, I, I can tell you, you know, me coming up, in the military, I wasn't uh, that financially savvy, and I don't think we had a lot of training to kind of get us in that, you know, in that direction. So, what can you share with us about your specific position? Yeah, so I, I mean that's a great place to start. Um, so, our office, which is in the office of the Under Secretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness, um, we really provide the recommend the policy and provide the policy oversight for mandatory financial training, which is something that um, the services did not have fully in place or or have a, a robust program um, when you and I uh, first entered the service. Of course, I entered a, a well before you did, um, but uh, the services are now required to have mandatory financial literacy programs uh, across their life cycle, across the service life cycle, and that includes training, counseling, um, and an annual survey that we do at the department level to assess the financial literacy and preparedness of the force to kind of say at an enterprise level how folks are doing. Um, the training and counseling delivered by the services enables members and their families to have the knowledge and tools they need to make informed financial decisions and avoid negative outcomes that may lead to uh, financial problems and uh, unfortunately in some cases may add uh, contribute to adverse personnel actions or other financial well-being factors um, that may impact uh, total force readiness. Um, we know that um, Financial readiness and the stress of it manifests itself in, in any number of ways, um, from um, family problems to lower propensity to re-enlist and things like that. So by investing in service members and families and giving them the tools they need to be uh, financially, have a state of financial well-being, um, we're also investing in, in the readiness of the force. Excellent. Um, thank you. So uh, tying right back into that. So let's talk about financial readiness and our nation's fighting force. So um, what does financial readiness mean? And then why, why is that important? What can you share with folks watching today? Yeah. So um, to, to kind of circle back and I probably got, you know, a little ahead of your question there, Leah, <laughs> um, but they're all great questions. So financial readiness, when we think about financial readiness, we think about, um, at least in my mind, you know, individuals having the knowledge and the skills um, and demonstrating the behaviors to make rational and informed financial decisions based on their individual uh, circumstances and goals. Um, and we can assess these results um, in terms of a, an outcome status of how well is our individual financial well-being. And in fact, there is a, a score sheet, uh, a, a self-assessment that you can get on uh, the CFPB website 
that measures financial well-being. So there's a and those looks at that looks at factors such as your ability to meet a financial shock. You know, a lot of people say, do you have four hundred dollars in emergency savings? Or if you had to go on emergency leave and it was a thousand dollars for you and your family, how would you do that? You know, if the phone call came tonight that said, God forbid you had to go home. Or, you know, are you know, what is your debt to income ratio? Does the do, do your finances control you or do you control your finances? Ki kind of uh, scenarios that kind of establish whether or not we we have some sense of financial well-being, um, and those are the important factors. Uh, and as we talked about, you know, if you don't have a state of financial well-being, the, the stress that can manifest itself either in terms of family problems again, or uh, physical things such as high blood pressure, you know, stomach upset stomach, uh, you know, or you know, in some cases, you know, it even goes to uh, self-harm. Uh, it's uh, present in uh, suicide ideation. So we work with suicide prevention office in what ways that we can help them make sure that folks know that the resources are available uh, to reduce that stress. And again, personnel turnover um, in, in units that creates problems. And, you know, especially if we lose someone that we've invested a lot of time and money in, in training them to be not only uh, technicians or, or war fighters, but, but leaders as well. And we don't want to lose those skills. So it's, it's really important, uh, not only on a personal level to make sure that people have the skills to be better and better off in their own lives, but better off in serving the department and the nation. Oh, absolutely. And, um, you know, I, I could just remember me when I, when I was coming up and, and I just trying to figure out how to manage, uh, a household. I had two kids at the time. A wife, uh, kind of paycheck to paycheck. It was a, uh, it was, it was difficult to say the least. Uh, but I, I remember one, um, and I talked about her in the previous chief chat, Miss Miss Kramer, Miss Kramer, Anna Kramer, that I had in my. She was a supervisor for me, uh, civil service, and she showed me this TSP, and she showed me her TSP. She actually opened it up, and she showed me her balance. And when I saw her balance, I was like, oh, my goodness, that's a lot of money. I've never seen that much money like on. on. And um, and she's like, well, if you start, if you start now. And I think I was like 24 or 25 at the time. She's like, it, eventually it'll build up to this point. And so at that moment, I decided to, you know, contribute 15 percent of my paycheck every month uh, to to the TSP. And now I'm looking at my TSP like I was looking at Miss Kramer's back in the day. So it. Yeah. Uh, I was just fortunate to have somebody, you know, in, in my life or in my career that, that was able to kind of get me thinking about really saving money or doing doing the right thing with my money. So uh, big shout out to Miss Kramer. Thank you for for, uh, you know, being the person that you are and getting me on the right road. But I'm glad the military is taking an active role in trying to teach uh, financial literacy and financial readiness to our service members because they absolutely need it, especially early in their career. No, they, they, they do. And, you know, you would be surprised and, and maybe not um, the number of folks I talk to still, you know, senior NCOs and senior officers who haven't, uh, who did not, were not fortunate like you or I to have people, you know, put an ar a sh arm around our shoulder and take us aside and, you know, teach us the value of compounding and starting early and that it's, you know, cheaper if you start early because you have more time for, for the money to grow and, and things like that. I mean, I remember um, we all, you know, made financial errors, uh, due to our inexperience growing up and, and things like that. You know, I've certainly made my share. Um, and even today, you know, we still have, uh, financial stressors in, in our lives. You know, if we're young, um, I mean, I can remember as a young officer with, as you had, you know, two kids and, uh, rolling into a PCSing into a town where, um, houses, uh, you know, housing was tight. And, you know, they look at my, my BA and, you know, compute my rent by my BA plus $200. And oh, by the way, you know, there's no refrigerator in the house. So if you want to rent this last house in Hinesville, Georgia, you know, you know, you got to buy a refrigerator too. And so, you know, we, we've all, you know, fortunately or unfortunately been there and hopefully learned lessons and, and things like that. And, and even today, you know, I, you know, why I have, you know, what I would call a, a great state of financial well-being. I myself am not, pat, you know, not free of financial stressors where I am in my life. I mean, I have a, uh, a 90 year old, uh, 91 year old mother-in-law and between my wife and I, you know, 
we worry whether or not she will outlive her resources, in which case, you know, she will be dependent upon us. And, um, you know, her mother, you know, outlived, uh, you know, her, her son-in-law. And I certainly hope that doesn't, that tradition doesn't continue, uh, but why I wish my mother-in-law a long life. Um, but uh, so I have that and, and I have a daughter with a grown daughter with special needs. And so, you know, it's how do we care for her, um, you know, when we're gone. So, you know, we're, you know, it's not uncommon or it's normal for everyone to have financial stressors, even if they're financial, financially well off. And so we shouldn't be afraid of it. And we shouldn't, um, you know, going through life, you know, uh, shouldn't be afraid to ask for help or, or, or guidance when we need it. I mean, we got to chief, we got to work on uh, getting the stigma out of those who, who might need financial help or assistance or, or, or knowledge because they, they may not know or they may have a financial problem uh, that's beyond their control, that they've done everything right and uh, good things still, uh, bad things still happen to good people. But I, I think you're absolutely right. We, we need to, as leaders, uh, take an active role, even though the department mandates it, it's, it's still up to leadership to make it happen. No, absolutely. So um, I understand that now the financial readiness literacy training is required at certain times during a member's career. Uh, what does that in training include? So that, that training includes uh, basically, as you know, used to say, uh, soup to nuts. It's everything from um, how to manage a checkbook, um, so you're not in the, the normal uh, uh, situation that we've always heard the story of, you know, the, the kid saying, you know, uh, Chief, how can I be out of money when I still have all these checks to write? Uh, but normal uh, budgeting uh, to the importance of saving for retirement with TSP and for those under the blended retirement, uh, matching the match so that when they do get out, be it after an initial term of service or, or serving a full career, they at least have the portable component of a retirement system, a TSP nest egg to take with them. And then in, in between, uh, it's the importance of understanding consumer credit, how it works, uh, how not to be a, a victim of being trapped in a cycle of, uh, of too much credit, um, how to determine, you know, in terms of estate planning, making sure that uh, wills are up to date, uh, powers of attorney, which are all important things for uh, being deployable anyway. Um, and then training that uh, goes with uh, outside of the military life cycle events, but things that go with personal life cycle events, um, marriage, birth of a child, uh, divorce, unfortunately, if that happens, uh, serious illness, but all those things that you want to make sure that, you know, if you come into the service single and you get married, you want to make sure that you enroll your spouse in deers. If you have a child, you want to make sure that they're enrolled in DEERS for, for their medical care and their benefits and keeping your, your paperwork and DEERS status current and, and things like that. All those important things. Um, and it's, you know, even we're starting to focus now, we've learned that, you know, even prior coming into the service, uh, we need to educate the young troops because the minute they step off the bus, uh, you know, they're being asked to make financial decisions. Uh, as you probably remember your days of when you showed up for basic training chief, um, asking you how much uh, SGLI you wanted and, you know, who's your beneficiary. And a lot of kids go, a benefit what um, kind of thing. And so we want to make sure that, you know, even stepping off the bus, they're, they're prepared to make the appropriate smart fin financial decisions to set them right. Yeah. Excellent. All great information, uh, Andy. So if you had to just boil it down. Um, so what are some key tips service members in military families should know about managing money? Um, so I think the, the, the key tips first are um, start, you know, start, start saving, uh, start learning what you need to do. Um, a lot of great tools out there um, that the department has uh, and resources. So we have a number of websites. We have uh, finred.usalearning.gov, which is our basic website um, that has a, a lot of information on, on where to begin, uh, how to get a hold of a um, financial counselor um, to, to learn if you have questions, a lot of self-paced information, a lot of uh, micro learning videos on car buying, uh, savings for retirement. Um, in addition to that website, we've got a website uh, called millspousemoneymission.org that's guaranteed 
that's uh, geared towards spouses, and we continue to update that based on feedback from spouses and all, um, because they have they've told us that they have some uh, different areas that they want to focus on and what they want to learn in terms of importance. So we kind of focus uh, and brand that and package it towards meeting the needs of spouses. And then we have a website uh, called Sense S C N dollar sign E, uh, which is available. Uh, on the Google uh, Play Store and the Apple App Store, free for download, that has a lot of the um, same things that uh, you have, and it has the actual uh, learning requirements uh, that are required over the life cycle that you can look at and access by, by life cycle touch point or point of need. There's some gamification on there to uh, drive home what folks have learned. Um, and again, uh, how to get more resources, and it also ties back to the micro learning videos and, and, and all that. So folks can can learn, they can spark that that knowledge, uh, and then uh, have resources to to get more information. But it you know the important thing is to start. It doesn't matter if you start early and start saving small, or you start saving later. May have to save a little bit bigger, um, but over time, as uh, Chief, as you said, you know that TSP balance will, will grow before your eyes and, 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 and add up. Um, so it's, you know, it's never too late to start, never too early to start, but the key word is to start and uh, keep, uh, keep learning. I mean, it's, it's a lifelong learning thing. The financial space keeps changing. Um, you know, when, when I started, yeah, you know, the, your savings account was actually a passbook that you took to the bank and they recorded your deposit in it. And, you know, now hardly anyone ever walks into a bank anymore and everything's done, done on your phone um, kind of thing. And you have uh, apps for transferring money back and forth to, to your friends. And, you know, I get into it with, with my son who wants to, when he owes me money, wants to Venmo me. It's like, no, you're going to write me a check or you're going to pay me cash because um, I'm going to be a laggard when it comes to certain um you know, fintech things because, you know, I'm old and I can do that. I, I, I can be a curmudgeon at times with my kids. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. And uh, I, I did like how you um, you mentioned about the military spouses because, uh, you know, in, in my case, especially, you know, my spouse, she, she managed a checkbook. She was she was a, she was a accountant for the household. And so making sure that uh, it was just, and I was good with it, too, because I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna go out here and I, I got to do things to, you know, take care of the family and you, you figure out where it's supposed to go. And so, so having resources specifically for the spouses, I think is very important as well. Yeah, no, that, that's right. I mean, cause you know, every family is different, you know, it, as you indicated, you know, in, in your household, you know, you, your spouse kind of ran the checkbook, you know, when we were on active duty, you know, my, my, my wife, you know, she really wanted to, you know, keep your hands off the checkbook. And she just kind of said, you know, you tell me when I have to put the charge card away. Um, and at one point, you know, um, unfortunately didn't, didn't really know how much I was making as a major. And when she went to uh, uh, sign up our, our son, who was maybe five at the time for, for after a school or, or a childcare program on post, and she had to fill out, you know, how, how much, you know, the family made. And, and how much I made, they, everyone knew because I was a major how much I made and I was the director of resource management. Uh, she put down a number and they said, oh, honey, we have to have a talk with you. Your, your husband makes way more than that kind of thing. But she said, well, I don't know. He just tells me what, what, when to stop, but he hasn't told me to stop yet. So um, kind of thing. But yeah, it's important <laughs> that the families do have, have the money talk though about regardless of who has it so that there is no disconnect about the, uh, spending too much or, or, or not enough on what a family may need. Absolutely. And we appreciate you mentioning uh, all the resources that FinRed uh, brings to the table and also tell us about, tell us in, also talking about the, the, map, the mobile app as well. So we appreciate that. But uh, we, we have, uh, you have a very captive audience today. So you got soldiers, airmen, guardians, sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members uh, joining us from all over the world. Uh, what's one message you'd like to share with our heroes today? Um, well, besides thanking everyone for, for what they're doing and continuing the tradition of service, and I know that, uh, you know, the last uh, 15, 20 years have been a lot longer uh, or feel a lot longer, a lot harder than, than many of the years that, that I served on between 1980 and 2007, uh, just because of the, all the conflicts going on. Um, you know, you got to pay yourself first. Um, 
with with your paycheck. And if that's you know maxing out the TSP or even man doing more than five percent to TSP, or paying yourself uh, first by putting into your emergency savings, um, you got to do that. And you can do that without you know uh, crimping y- your lifestyle too much in terms of what you want to spend money on today. But um, your future self uh, will will thank your present self for for looking out for you. I mean, having you know having my my future self. Uh, uh, now, from what I was a, a young, uh, you know, lieutenant or captain, um, I can certainly look back and, and, and say that's true. Um, but uh, remember that, you know, you got to pay yourself first uh, and look out for your others. And then, you know, the other thing I would say is, you know, kind of going back to leadership, you know, being in the military, doesn't matter who what our rank is, uh, you know, leadership is uh, an important role we have uh, across the board, whether or not you, you, you're the chairman of the, of the chairman of the Joint Chiefs or you're the senior guy in the foxhole, you know, you, you're a leader at some level uh, looking out for somebody else. And so we have to always have to look out for one another, not only from a financial perspective, financial well being perspective, but from a total well being perspective in terms of making sure that, that we're all okay um, and get each other help when we need it and make sure that the, there is no. Uh, problem in asking for for help. Um, It's something that uh, we all have to do from time to time. And if we all admit that, I think we all be a lot better off. Thank you, Andy, um, for those words. So we want to just turn to our live Facebook feed for a moment and share some of our viewer comments with you. Um, As Chief said, you know, we have we have folks watching from all over. So Arsena says, uh, welcome. Jen says hi from Fort Worth. Um, and then you have Tim Welch. He says hello from Michigan. Uh, and then you just have several people that are, are tuning in and they're, um, they're watching and not commenting. I'm going to check over here on Chief's page really quick. Um, she, you know, Chief, Chief has some good friends who are always viewers. Um, so if you're out there, <laughs> let us know you're there. Yeah, no, I I got some uh, really good supporters, and uh, and I kind of want to go back to you know you you talking about asking for help. I think that's that's tough for a lot of folks, um, and and I know even working in this position here at the exchange, I can remember when I was a a young private because I started my my career in the Marine Corps. So I was a young private, not being very, um, you know, financially responsible. And uh, I had the DPP, you know, before Military Star Card, it was called the DPP. And, yes. Uh, the D- yeah. And so the thing about the DPP is they would go in and take your paycheck if you didn't pay, if you didn't pay a balance. And, and I learned that the hard way uh, as a, and it's crazy how full circle now I'm this, SEA for the same organization that was running DPP at the time, but but uh, you know that's neither here nor there. But just not not uh, being too prideful to ask for help and just thinking I can figure it out on my own. Um, you know, I I just learned the hard way that that you know what instead of us, and, and I'm glad that uh, your office has been st- stood up so we can be proactive and and actually uh, getting folks the help they need before it's too late. And so uh, you know, I was able to learn from that situation. And now I've, you know, I've been very, very financially responsible since then. But um, I'm just, you know, I just want to pick you back and say, if you need help, please ask for help in any uh, facet of your life. So uh, finances is one thing, but any, if you're struggling with mental health or whatever the case may be, please, please ask for help. So thank you for yeah. kind of harping on that as well. No, thank, thank you. I, I appreciate it, and um, I appreciate uh, you you doubling down on it. Um, it it's just so important. Um, you know, while we wait for comments, um, I, I'll share one of my, you know, lessons learned financial wake up calls, and then you can, I'll let you sh- share one of yours, Chief. Um, so I remember, you know, right after I got commissioned, a single second lieutenant uh, going uh, signal officer basic course at uh, at Fort Gordon, and every day we go to the club for lunch. And in those days, um, your club membership card was also a credit card, so you could just, you know, swipe for lunch and. So um, that's what the young second lieutenant uh, Cohen did, uh, you know, for a month. Uh, he swiped his uh, his uh, membership card for lunch every day at the club for a month, 
and then got this uh, hu tremendous, uh, humongous bill, you know, or was for me, is like 250 bucks, you know, when you're making $888 a month as a second lieutenant in 1980, 1980 that, that's a big chunk of, chunk of change. And so I learned the value of, you know, not keeping track of, you know, your spending when, when you're operating in a cashless society, which a lot of folks do these days. And so, you know, after the first month, I, mean, I, I put the club card away and, and everything else was a, was a cash transaction, the rest of my, my officer basic course. But, but it certainly was uh, a, a wake up call to me about how, how easily uh, spending that is painless can get away from us um, and, and things like that. Um, you got a, a lesson learned you like to share, Chief? Well, I mean, so, you know, growing up in my younger days, the overdraft project protection was my friend. So I had a lot of overdraft uh, situations where you, you think you're saving money, so you would move money into your savings account, but then end up going right back into your savings account to cover your checking account. And so I played that, played that game for a, a long time. And then, um, uh, you know, one day we, I was just like, let's get a spreadsheet and let's let's li literally figure out what we're spending our money on. And once we broke down the spreadsheet, we were like, man, we were just, we were wasting money in a, in a lot of different areas of our life that we, we could have mm -hmm. did better. So, um, so we, we did the spreadsheet. And like you said, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna take out cash. Uh, and I'm and that's gonna be my allowance. So I'm gonna give myself an allowance. And I can't go over my allowance. And, uh, and, and, and that that helped helped us get on the path to a, a better and then getting promoted also helped as well. So once, once you know, yeah. but but I was also living off of eighty five percent of my check, uh, for you know since I was twenty four. So I just, I just learned to live within the means that I had, and and I think that that was important uh, because I could have got uh, that hundred percent of that check and probably did the same thing, uh, frivolous spending and do all that other stuff. So at least I knew fifteen percent was paid to me off the top. And, it, and maybe I, I couldn't dive into it and go grab it, which is a, which was a great thing at that time. Um, but at the time, I was like, man, I need to go in here and grab some money. But um, I just learned to live within my means. No, that, 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 that's important. I mean, I think, uh, you know, that's kind of a key lesson is learn to live within your means. And, and we have a lot of control in terms of how we set our means. And even when we're living within our means, as you indicated, um, you were living on 85 percent of your paycheck uh, after taxes. Uh, because she, you know, you were, you know, doing the, the TSP, um, but yet, you know, not until you created your spreadsheet, did you realize that uh, you had money going out the door that you didn't even know where it was, was going. Um, Absolutely. And so t today, I guess the, the challenge I would, you know, give to anyone is, especially if you don't have an emergency savings account or, a, or a sufficient emergency savings account is, hey, if you take uh, 10, 15 minutes, go onto your, you know, your phone, and look at uh, all the th apps you're subscribed to that you're probably not using, uh, you will find money uh, that's you know leaking out of your wallet that you're not even missing because you don't know it's going. And if you just redirected you know 15 or 25 dollars a month uh, into a savings account, you know at 25 dollars a month, um, that's what 300 dollars a year uh, into an emergency fund, and then you add a little extra as something else comes up. Before you know it, you know that that emergency fund pot is, is growing, and you can then use that one emergency fund uh, to fund any number of um, risks you might have. So you wouldn't have to spend another, uh, you know, fifteen dollars a month on insurance to replace your cell phone screen if you drop your phone, because you got the two hundred dollars uh, that Apple wants when you drop the phone and you have to replace your screen there. And you got the, you know, the $300 if something else goes wrong with the gaming station or, or, or whatever. And so, you know, you don't have to keep buying all these individual single peril uh, extended warranties and all when you have, you know, one pot of money that, that would cover many. And it just kind of funds itself after a while. Excellent advice. You know, um, I think we've all been there, uh, no, mat no matter, you know, our status or whatever civilian military um, family members, you know, yeah. we've all been there. So we do have a few more comments. Um, Julie says she cut out haircuts um, and, and save that. Tim said, true that, so easy to just swipe the card. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, if you haven't been there, good on you. <laughs> 
And yeah, Chief, no, that's an excellent idea too to put everything in a spreadsheet. That's that's how I do it and track what what's going where. And so you can ask my kids; they know if if that money is gone on a card, Mama's gonna know it. <laughs> And she's going to be saying, what did you, you do with that? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, in fact, you know, my, my wife hates it because we have, you know, the the spend alert set for a certain amount on um, mm -hmm. on the Amex and the other cards. And so, um, you know, if she's going to do something, she will text me and say, my phone's going to go ding um, and, and things like that. To kind of get ahead of it. Um, but to, to your point, Leah and, and Chief, about, you know, a spreadsheet, you know, it doesn't have to be a spreadsheet and it doesn't have to be to the penny. Um, it could be, you know, on the back of a napkin or as we used to say in, in the old days in the army on a, on a C ration flap, I guess you really can't write on an MRE bag anymore. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, just kind of like, you know, it, and then to the nearest 10 or $25 or nearest 10, $20 about, you know, what am I getting in and, and where is it going? And, you know, and at the end of the, and you get to the bottom of the list, you know, as long as you don't have a negative number, you know, you should be good to go um, kind of thing. So, you know, people shouldn't be scared of, you know, you know, doing a budget or a spend plan. It's, it's just that a, a plan, an estimate, um, and it's not intended to, to rule your life, but r really guide your life. And you talk to a lot of people about um, things about, um, you know, no, it's too hard to do when, when it's, it really doesn't have to be that hard. It just needs to be, you know, mm -hmm. Just, just uh, you know, as uh, you know, they would say on the T-shirt, just do it, kind of thing, um, or you know, things like that. So, um, hopefully, we can take some of the mystique out of uh, you know financial planning and financial readiness, you know, in our little chat today. Absolutely, Andy. Uh, thanks for all that you've shared. Thank you for your service to our country. Um, and so, before we say goodbye, can you please remind our viewers where they can go for more information about FinRed? military spouse resources, and then where to find your app. Okay, so just real quick, um, and we really didn't talk about it a whole lot, but each of the services, you know, in their family, uh, military family readiness centers, uh, be it the ACS Center for the Army, Airmen uh, Center, Family Readiness Center for the, for the Air Force, uh, uh, Fleet Support Center uh, in, in the, the Navy and the, the Sea Services and stuff, you know, they have financial counselors, uh, financial help. Some units have uh, financial specialists or command financial NCOs uh, that are, you know, probably the, the first line of uh, support. 24-7, uh, the department has military one source that uh, has financial counselors available. And then, you know, our online resources are you know, finred at uh, USA, finred.usalearning.gov. Good to put up on the screen. I can read it um, and make sure I got it right. And then uh, millspousemoneymission.org, and then finally the, the Sense app. Uh, all there, all all there for service members and families. And uh, please use them um, uh, to get smart and to, to get what you need. And uh, when you get smart, uh, you can certainly help your ser fellow service members and their families as well. Uh, bring everyone along. Um, so thank you so much. Oh, oh, no worries at all. And we we did we were able. I know we can't see it, but they're, they're flashing up the, the websites and stuff for you as well. So uh, I, the, our viewers can see uh, exactly where to go in the, in the Sense app as well. So we appreciate, you know, you and your office. Again, thank you for your service. I'm really uh, kind of big on financial readiness. Now I try to teach younger folks at a, a lot earlier age on how to be more financially responsible, uh, how to, you know, because even, you know, on, on the ground level, we, we don't take, we, we take our troops to the financial specialist when it's already a problem and we don't get them to them kind of uh, more early in the game. And so I'm, I'm glad that we're, we're teaching it and, and they're having to do mandatory training at some points of the year uh, because we even us, you know, we have the military star card, which has a, a, a ton of benefits to it. But um, if you don't use it properly or if you use it, uh, then, then it, it doesn't help you at all. And so we. We want we want our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coast Guard members. We want them uh, using any any type of financial uh, card or whatever the case may be. We want them to know how to use it and know how to live within their means. And so, uh, we just, like I said, I, we appreciate all this, the information that you shared, um, and we'll make sure we push that out uh, through our Facebook and stuff. Um, you know, 
I just, uh, it's been an honor having you with us today. Uh, we appreciate your service. We appreciate your organization. Uh, this means so much to all the nation's heroes. Uh, if you don't mind staying on after uh, the live so I can get some information from you, I'd appreciate sure. that. But we just want to wish you all the best and just thank you for what you do. No, thank you. And thank you for having us. Um, we're, we're glad to, to, to be a part of the, your, your program and uh, looking after uh, the heroes that we have. And uh, anytime we can help spread the word and, uh, you know, either educate and motivate someone to, you know, start their emergency savings if they don't have it or, and, you know, tick up their TSP or, or on the, the other side of the equation, uh, you know, someone who's, you know, on route to being that, that crusty uh, senior NCO to put their arms around the young troop and, and help them so that when the young troop gets out and says, you know, it was, uh, you know, Chief Osby who put his arm around me and, and got me on the road to, to making me the, you know, the financial success I am today or, or the, the successful person I am, you know, in, in my life after the service, um, I think that speaks well of all of us. So uh, thank you for everything uh, you've done, Chief, in developing uh, service members. And, and Leah, thank you for everything you're doing. Awesome. Awesome. So yes, thank sir. you so much. And, uh, and if, for those who are watching, we, we also are, you know, we are available on YouTube and Spotify. So make sure you check us out on those platforms as well. Uh, and with that being said, uh, Chief Chat out.